Oh, when are we getting those new suits, Brandon? All right. I break me. Unit 3, Chapter 4, ele let's call it Elevator Problems. No, this is not, we're not going to learn how to fix elevators, okay? Uh -huh. But these are problems that, deal that, that an elevator kind of gives us an idealized situation to talk about such problems. Now, the, what we're learning about today does, does not just apply to elevators. It will apply to anything going through the same type of motion that the elevators are. Okay, what? Escalators will work too. Okay, yeah. helicopters carrying carrying packages, you know, suspended from meeting them. The students riding roller coasters, all that can can be a can fit into the same type of motion that we're describing today. All right. So here's this first elevator. Okay, the student is standing on a scale. The scale is this box right here. Okay. Um, for all my drawings today, is the same student. Okay, and this student's going to have a mass of seventy kilograms. Okay. So the same student each time, and their mass is 70 kilograms. So even though my pictures look different, the mass is still going to be the same. Thank you, love. Bye. All right, so first situation right here. What does the scale reading do? So we're going to try to figure it out for every, every one of the situations we have up here. All right, but this first one, we have a constant velocity upward. Okay. Before we figure out what the scale reads, I want you to draw a free body diagram for the person on the scale. Okay? So take, take a moment or so and draw a free body diagram, okay? And the constant velocity up. Do you have to draw the actual free body? Nope, a free body diagram is just a dot, right? Yeah, I mean, like, if oh. you want, they're your, they're your notes. What's a drawing? What does that mean? That is just a drawing of the person in the elevator. Do you need those visuals? Sure. So instead of erasing, we use more resources. You can get like five pictures. We're not taking that much. Don't want to get thrown at Kyle. So just an upward velocity. Constant upward velocity. Danielle, you okay? Kevin, pay attention. Where's your drawings? I drew them in my head. You drew them in your head. It's a great place, but it's hard to recall them. All right. Free body diagram. What does it look like? A dot. A dot. Wonderful. Then what? Gravity arrow. Gravity pointing down. Bigger one. Okay, a bigger force pointing upward? No. 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 It's not staying the same. Okay, so who thinks that, that this normal force should be bigger than the force of gravity? Raise your hand. Who thinks, okay, we got two, we got two. Who thinks it should be the same? Who thinks it should be the same? Okay. Who thinks it should be smaller? Well, then you should just stick with just taking only chemistry. All right, so, Kayla, why do you think this is bigger? No, say you, you were arguing. Why'd you say it? I don't, I don't oh, come on. Say it now. I don't really know. I okay. Don't. Say it right. Constant V. Up. Okay, so the velocity is oh. upward, right? Yeah. Now, what indicates a force? Velocity or acceleration? Acceleration. Acceleration indicates in that force, right? Oh. Right? If we have a constant velocity, what's our acceleration? Zero. 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 So acceleration is zero. What does what does that mean about our, what does that tell us about our net force? It tells us our net force is equal. zero. So these forces are equal. So they should be the same length. F n should equal F g. Nope, that's the normal force. It would be tension if we were drawing a free body diagram for the elevator because we have a cable, but we're drawing it for the person. Okay, good question. Right. So we have normal force pointing up, gravity pulling down, right? Is it hard to see that N, Michael? No, yeah, no I just didn't know really what that meant. All right, any questions? All right, so let's figure out what the scale reads, right? What should we start with? No. List of what you know. Okay, so we got our list, right? 
Newton's second law, F net equals mass times acceleration, right? Yeah. We know the acceleration is zero. So the, so the right side is going to be 70 times zero. Right? What's the left side going to be? It's going to be... Um... Not which way? Oh, not right here. We can use down as positive today. Uh, it's going to be no, Fn no, minus... No. Uh, okay. Which way is positive? Up. You guys want to use up as positive? Yeah. Okay, so Skylar, what would you say? It's going to be Fn minus uh, mg. Okay, Fn minus Fg. We'll plug in mg here in a second. Okay? So Skylar is using up as positive, right? So Fn minus Fg. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah? Are there any questions about that? No. Okay. Now, we know the force of gravity is mass times what? Mass times acceleration due to gravity, right? So <laughs> this is going to be Fn minus mass times the acceleration due to gravity, right? And 70 times 0 is 0. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Mass is 70. 70. Acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. Shouldn't this be zero or should this shouldn't this be negative? Kyle, shouldn't this be negative? Oh. No. Ah, good. We already have the minus, right? Since we already have the minus, we're already counting this 9.8 as negative, so we need to leave it as, as just 9.8, as just the scalar. Okay? What's 70 times 9.8? 686. So we have Fn minus 686 equals 0. Well, then you got to add on both sides, 686. Okay. We do some simple algebra, and we get Fn equals 686 newtons. So you might be able to see that right over here. Fn equals 686. But you can make it quicker as you go. I'm just showing all the steps. Okay. I've seen students go from here to here before. That's fine. Where to where? Okay. From this one to this one. Or even from this one to this one. You don't need to show every single step that I'm showing. I'm just making sure that we have, we know what we're doing. All right. So what does the scale read? Because the question is, what does the scale read in Newtons? What does the scale read? It reads 686 newtons. Okay. Good. The scale reads 686 newtons because the scale measures our uh, upward force. 686 newtons. It, our scale measures our weight. weight. Right? The weight is the force of gravity. gravity. And the reason why the weight is the force of gravity is because of this equation right here, right? The weight that the scale reads is really the normal force the scale applies upwards, right? Right? If I solve this equation right here for Fn, we get Fn equals mg, don't we? Right? So the, the, the weight of a scale, the weight a scale reads is the force of gravity pulling down on that person, right? Well, the direction change. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Yeah. Next situation. The elevator arrives at the destination and stops. So velocity is zero. Okay. What does the scale read? Okay. Start by drawing a free body diagram and then figure out what the scale is going to read. So draw a free body diagram. Take a moment, draw a free body diagram. Once you draw that, we'll we'll draw we'll draw one together, and then we'll go from there. Velocity is zero. The elevator has stopped. Okay, so free body diagram. What force are acting on the person? 
Gravity, which way? Down. Down. Now, how, how should these gravity vectors compare? It should be the same because the person's mass didn't change, did it? Sure did. Okay. What force is acting up? Normal force, right? Now, what's the relationship between the normal force and gravity when their velocity is zero? They're equal. Right? So is this situation where the, where, the, where the elevator has zero velocity different from this situation where we had a constant velocity upward? No. No. It's not different in terms of forces. The, reasons why, the reason why it's not different is because the, the velocity is still constant. Mm -hmm. Right? If velocity is zero, it's constant, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. But if, if velocity is zero, acceleration is zero. zero. So acceleration is zero regardless of which way the elevator is moving. It's the same exact situation, isn't it? Yep. So it's the same exact situation. What does the scale read? Uh, Six hundred eighty-six newtons still. Okay. The scale still reads six hundred eighty-six newtons. Because this six hundred eighty-six newtons, this is the person's what? Weight. This is their weight. And the weight is the force of gravity. Act on the person, right? Yeah. Is weight the same as mass? No. Weight can be changed. Weight can be changed. How can weight be changed? If you're on the moon. Ah, if we're on the moon, the weight's different because acceleration due to gravity is less, right? Yes. Ah, so weight can be changed, but mass cannot. So I should get extra credit for remembering that. You should. We, we, also, we also talked about it yesterday. Okay. All right. Are there any questions about this situation? Okay. So since this one's the same situation, I'm going to switch it then. We're going to say velocity is down. Velocity is constant, but down. It's still the same thing? Yeah. You sure? Yes. Why? Because it's constant, it's not accelerating. Good. Constant velocity means zero acceleration, right? Zero acceleration means that these forces are equal, right? Now, a student who thinks velocity indicates that force would say that gravity is greater than normal, but that is incorrect because acceleration is what tells us about net force, right? Does that make sense? So these three situations, I've just drawn these two pictures, are all exactly the same situation because they have zero acceleration. So that scale will read 686 newtons every single time. Okay. Now, if this person was not in the elevator and they were stepping on a scale, what would it read? Same thing. Same thing. 686, right? Because if I'm not in the elevator... My acceleration is still zero, right? So I'm staying on the scale. My acceleration is still zero. So this weight right here, the 686 newtons, that would be the person's weight regardless of where they're at. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to get a different situation. In my next situation, or the next situation, same person. Okay, I know they looked a little taller here. I'll fix it in a second. Okay. Same person, mass is still 70 kilograms, except now the acceleration is which way? Down. Down, it's negative 3 meters per second because, <coughs> excuse me, we know it's down because earlier we said which way was positive? Up. Up. We call it up positive. So the acceleration is negative 3 meters per second. So the, this elevator is accelerating down. Once again, let's start with a free body diagram. What? Because I want to make sure it's clear. Free body diagram. It sounds like I'm mumbling it. I feel like I'm mumbling it. Let's start with a free body diagram. What force is acting on the person? Gravity. 
Gravity and normal. Okay, which way is gravity point? Down. Okay. How does gravity compare to the other ones you've already drawn? Good, it's the same. We're still on Earth, aren't we? Acceleration is, still, acceleration is gravity is still 9.8, right? Did the person's mass change? No. no. So the gravity you have in this drawing should be the same as the ones you have in the previous one. So it should be the same length, right? So this, F, this force of gravity, Fg, should still be the same length as it was before. It would be nice if we had copy and paste functions on our notes, huh? Just copy and paste it. Yes. All right. Yeah, she has a smart board. All right. So gravity is the same length and down, right? What's the other force acting? Normal, right? Now, how does a normal compare to gravity? Okay, I heard smaller and I heard longer. Okay, who thinks normal is, is longer than force gravity? It's smaller. Okay, who thinks normal is smaller than force gravity? Joseph, why do you think it's longer? Okay, so why is it longer? He's had a hunch, right? Okay, let me ask the question this way. Which force is winning? If we're accelerating downward, and let's say this is a tug of war. If we're accelerating downward, who's winning, gravity or normal? Gravity. Gravity. That's all right. Okay. So if gravity is winning, that means gravity has to be longer. The force has to be greater, right? So then our normal force is shorter. So our normal force is shorter now. Okay. Notice we're changing our normal force, not our gravity. Gravity should be the same length as it was before. Okay. Because mass and acceleration to gravity didn't change. All right, does that make sense, guys? Okay, let's make a prediction here. Previously, the scale read 686 newtons, right? So how would you guys predict the scale to read now? Don't shout it out. Okay. Take a look at the picture, analyze the situation. Maybe look at your previous work. What would you expect the scale to read now? Would it be 686? Would it be more than 686? Would it be less than 686? Okay, don't shout it out. Just wait a second. We're going to vote. So what powder was that? That is uh, corrosion from the matrix. Corrosion. Okay. <laughs> That's an awkward conversation. All right, so who thinks the scale is equal to 686? Who thinks the scale will still read 686? You just going to go with it? Why, why, Rex? I just do. You just do? Okay. An argument someone might make, Mass didn't change, acceleration to gravity didn't change, so how can how can the scale read differently, right? Someone might make that argument, correct? Yeah. Okay. Who thinks it's done the scale read more than 686? Who thinks less than 686? Kyle, why do you say more? It's more powerful. Like the normal force is not as much as the gravity. Okay. And this, does the scale read the force of gravity or the force normal? Who said less than 686? Katrina, why? Um, well, as I know, my lab is just, you know, acceleration is going to increase. We're going to be accelerating to a negative three. We're going to have to add the positive one. So you don't know? Oh. You just think it's going to be less? No, I don't know. You don't know now? Okay. Sky, why do you think it's less? Because with the downward acceleration, that means there's going to be, like, there's going to be more force towards the ground, so the force normal is smaller. Okay. Already, so you can tell the force normal is going to be smaller. Okay. The scale is going to read a smaller scale. Okay. Now, when we talk about scales yesterday, and we step on the scale, what did, what did I tell you the scale does when you step on it? There's a spring on the inside, right? And that spring, is it measuring the force gravity pulls down, or the force the spring pushes up? The force the spring pushes up, right? So this, this scale, it's measuring the force needed to push up, doesn't it? So which, which force is from the scale, gravity or normal? Normal. Normal is from the scale, right? Mm -hmm. So if normal gets less, what's going to happen to the scale's reading? It's less. It's probably going to get less. 
Okay. Let's make sure though. All right. So to make sure, we'll look at Newton's second law again. So F net still equals ma. Right. The right side, mass times acceleration. What's our mass? Seventy. What's our acceleration? Negative three. And yes, you need to include the negative sign because that tells me it's going which way? Down. Down. F net is Fn minus Fg. Okay. This kid doesn't want his voice heard. Okay. So Fn minus Fg equals 70 minus times negative three. Does this make sense? Yeah? Okay, 70 times negative three is? Negative two times. Please stop banging your pencils on the table. Thank you. Fg is mass times acceleration to gravity, right? Yeah. So it's 70 times 9.8. Okay. Why is this one not negative? Because there's already a the negative is already there, right? Okay. This one is negative because we didn't denote its direction yet. This minus sign denotes gravity's direction. This negative sign denotes the acceleration's direction. Okay, so everything, all, all, all the directions are taken care of. What's 70 times 9.8? 686. 686. Kyle, okay, got a question? What? Got a question? Oh, you just were saying something. Okay, so now what I do? Plus 686. Add, thank you. What is it? 476. 476. So, what does the scale read? Smaller. Or less. Reads less, right? The scale reads 476 newtons. Sure does. Right? I don't believe it. So, what we just found, guys, what we just discovered is a quick way to lose weight. Okay? It's better than Jenny Craig. You get an elevator going negative three meters a second downward, you lose a third of your weight. Can we do that for wrestling with Lala? Just weigh yourself in the We don't have an elevator that goes that fast. Okay, and the elevator has to be. We do have an elevator. We do have an elevator, but the elevator has to be accelerating. Okay? Well, we have an accelerator. Have you ridden in our uh, you ridden in an hour elevator before? That one's a joke. It's just slow. It is slow. Is it not? Is it constantly accelerating? No. 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 Okay. It only accelerates right when you flip the switch. So I don't feel like so it's with the scale right. and then switch. Right. But once you flip the switch, it accelerates for a split second, and then the velocity is now constant. constant. Well, if okay. you do it at the split though. second, then we'll be okay. Okay, but it takes a little bit for the scale to read. Right. So, so we could try this, part. Caleb, if we'll, if we if we had not really constantly accelerated. We'll stand on it for a minute. What if we kind of want to? It has to be like three to five years. It had to be a long acceleration. Okay. Now, if we at the middle school, guys, at the middle school where they have a, a, a more traditional elevator than one we have here, okay? It goes just like a normal like at, like at the mall or whatever. All right. We could try it there, but that elevator only accelerates for a split second. Okay? It's not constantly accelerating. Okay. So if we were to step on the scale, it would only read less for the moment it starts accelerating. Okay. And then we'll go back to normal. All right. So it would be unsafe if we had an elevator that constantly accelerated downward. Because by the time you got, if you went from the 10th floor to the bottom floor, you'd be going pretty fast when you got to the bottom. Crash. Okay. That's a pretty fast elevator. What? What if it started to like slow down? If I'm moving down and it's slowing down, that means my acceleration is which way? Uh, so like have it going down, but when you get closer to the floor, have it go back up. We need the Willy Wonka elevator. We need it, okay. Do we go left ways and sideways and diagonal ways? All right, so Michael brought the idea of if we're going down, but it's slowing down, then our acceleration is which way? Upwards. So what would an upward acceleration do to our, our scale reading? So a downward acceleration makes the scale reading less. An upward acceleration is going to make the scale reading more. Good job. So let's draw our free body diagram. All right. Does gravity change? Nope. Wouldn't it just be a positive feedback? Yeah. Yep. So it'd be 
be so, so it would be a nine. We'll get there. Does gravity change? No. No. So our force of gravity will still be the same. Now Kyle and Michael both suggest that the, the scale is going to be read more. Same with Caleb. Right? The scale is going to read more. So the scale reads more than what happens to my normal force. It's going all the way up. Okay, it should be more. longer. Okay. So in this case, Fn is greater than force gravity. I forgot to write it over here. In this one, Fn was less than Fg. What? <laughs> Did you get one at lunch? Wait, what? No, you're not getting something off. Everybody just tells me every week a teacher has a sub value. Do you not want to see me tomorrow? No, I'm just saying, like, I don't want to take a Oh, they have a, uh, they have a conference at the Okay. All right. So this is our prediction, right? Right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now our gravity vector should still be the same because mass and acceleration to gravity did change. So our gravity vector should still be the same, but the normal force is now greater. We can go back to that tug of war analogy, guys. If the elevator is accelerating upwards, right, that means the upward force has to be larger than our downward force. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Michael, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Because the normal force is winning the tug of war. Okay? So, let's figure out how much that scale will read. How much different? So, F net equals MA. Caleb, you already know, but not everybody knows yet. Okay. Well, let's be, let's be sure. Okay. So, then help me out, Caleb. What are we right next? What is F net? Come on, I thought we knew. Fn minus Fg. I said this. Caleb, the reason why I'm going through this, okay, is not because we already predicted the answer here, but because I want you to be able to extend what we're learning here to situations that aren't involving elevators. Okay, that's how we're going through it. So just because we predicted this one, that's great. Okay. There might be there might be more forces acting besides just two. Okay. There might be a tension and a normal force acting. Okay. So. Maybe. All right. So Fn minus Fg, that's our net force, right? Skyler, Kevin, stop playing around. Okay. Mass is still 70, right? Yeah. 70 times positive 3 because our acceleration is up. And we call it positive up. Okay. So Fn minus Fg equals 70 times 3. 70 times 3 is 210. Now, Fn minus Fg, Fg is mass times gravity, right? 70 times 9.8. So, Fn minus 686 equals 210. What do I do now? Add, add, add 686. I won't pick on you because I added the same thing last time. You got 896. 896. I so, did our weight increase? Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Did our weight increase, gentlemen? Stuck your tongue out. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, sit right, please. Kyle, turn around. Kyle, turn around. Thank you. Okay. So, did, did our scale, did, did the weight increase or decrease? Yeah. It increased. So those of you guys trying to put on weight for whatever reason, whether it's for football or wrestling or whatever, I found a better way besides creatine to put on weight. No. Okay. no. You get in an elevator. You're not increasing your mass. I know, but creatine doesn't gives you meaningless. But you're not going to be playing football on an elevator. Yeah, you might. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what you have on your iPod. You can okay. play football in the elevator. Oh. It'd be a video game. Uh, okay. Right. So. Creatine is an amazing thing. Okay. It is not. It's bad for you. So bad for you. All right, we can talk about that later. All right, so the mass here, guys, mass didn't change, but weight is 896 pounds, right? So what is this person's real weight, though? It is 686. What's their real weight? 686. Okay, 686 is their actual weight, okay? Because remember before we went to the different examples, I said if the scale was sitting on the floor and they were just they got the scale outside the elevator, 
Yes, what would it read? You guys said it was 686? Yes, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. So that is their actual weight. The, weight. the weight when the acceleration is zero, so whether it's a constant velocity upwards, downward, or zero velocity, the weight when acceleration is zero is the person's actual weight. This weight of 476 and this weight of 896 is what's called a parent weight. It's the weight the person feels because of the accelerations. Okay? That's called a parent weight. So in your homework, if they ask for an apparent weight, they're asking for what does the scale read because of the acceleration. Okay? So apparent weight is what they feel at that moment. Actual weight is if there was zero acceleration, what's their force of gravity? Okay. Does that make sense? All right. Last question, Katrina, and then we'll do some, some more examples. Some more. Some more. Some more. Not, not like graham crackers and chocolate. Okay, last one. What does the acceleration have to be for the scale to read zero newtons? Okay. For weightlessness. Okay, don't shout it out. I want you to think for a moment. What does the acceleration have to be for the scale to read zero newtons? Okay. Which is also called weightlessness. What? Okay, I'll let you answer first, right? No. Kyle, no. correct, I'll let you go, Caleb. Okay. All right? Benamani, you up that? No. <laughs> well, figure it out, Benamani, just in case. Well, I, I, I figured it out. Uh, oh, good one. <laughs> so what does the acceleration have to be for the scale that read zero newtons? <laughs> Mike, are you trying it out or what? You already done? Hey, I got to take a hard job for you guys. Julian, something like this. Am I right here? We don't want that force to be zero. We want what to be zero. Okay. We we want the scale. We want we want the, the scale to be zero. We want we want this to be a weightless experience, right? So which of these guys? Which of these is what the scale is for? Normal or gravity? Normal. Normal. So we want, in this equation, we want the normal to be what? Zero. Zero. No, you did that with the net forces here. Not the net forces. Because you had your zero over here. No, I didn't. Okay. Watch. All right, so what do you think? Who, who thinks they know the acceleration? How about the acceleration? Um, I'll put uh, negative 9.8. Negative 9.8. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Caleb, what do you think? Negative 9.8. Negative 9.8. Yeah, Skyler? Negative 9.8. Okay. Negative 9.8. If it's positive 9.8, that means we're accelerating which way? Uh, that means, uh, like, that means we double. I said 1.8. I didn't say that. Was oh, I'm not saying. I'm just saying that means we double the normal force. Okay, so some of us are saying the acceleration has to be negative 9.8. Well, let's, let's check to see. Let's, let's make sure. So F net equals MA, right? Yep. And Kyle and Skyler and Caleb and Katrina and I think a bunch of the other, other, other the rest of you said this acceleration has to be zero. Negative nine point eight. So seventy times negative nine point eight has to be equal to F N minus F G. So we're still using this free body diagram with normal up and gravity down, right? Sure. We're still using that free body diagram. Theoretically. Okay. Theoretically. Okay. So, Fg is Mg, right? So that's 70 times 9.8 equals 70 times negative 9.8, right? Now when I multiply through, we get 686 equals 686, except this 686 is negative. So then how do I move the 686 to the other side? We add. So when we add 686 to both sides, we get an Fn of zero. So you can have no apparent weight, okay, if we are accelerating downward at 9.8. That's how they do the Exactly. That's how they, so like when NASA is simulating zero gravity for their astronauts or other space organizations, they get a huge plane called a vomit comet, okay, because it makes people... You can figure it out. Oh, all right? gosh. And they fly them way up in the, in the, in the, as high as they can go without needing oxygen. Okay? 
And then they accelerate downward. They just they took the plane upside down, let gravity pull it down, and now I'm putting meters per second squared. How do they get How do they not die? They get like six or seven seconds of weightlessness. How do they not die? How much does it cost to go under? Um, I think Stephen Hawking, who's a who's a physicist, is the only person who's who's not in the space program who got to ride on it. How? He's in a wheelchair. I think that's why they let him because he's a big what's, physicist. What's he gonna do? <laughs> like move his chair? And I don't know. They got a video. All right, so you can't even talk. I don't have a video right now. They might have one on a new hey, scoop. Hey, yeah. hey, talk about it. So, Wait, what's scoop. That one? Guys, hey, go ahead and solve my own. Guys, we're not we're not arguing about who's Stephen Hawking. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so what's the first attraction where they do the same thing but you don't go into the thing? I don't know what it is. They might they might do that. NASA might be doing that thing, but but guys. So the 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 airplane goes down at negative nine point eight meters second squared. So then the people inside experience weightlessness. Just like if this elevator's rope were to break, okay, and the elevator didn't have any safety features on it, it would fall at negative nine point eight meters per second squared, and the person inside the elevator would feel weightless. So, so they don't need to feel that. So if you have, they wouldn't. Yeah. Kyle, Kyle, you're going to say something? Right? I was going to ask you, um, what was that? You were going to ask him? <laughs> I was going to ask you how to uh, survive like that. How they survive it? Because they, they only go for like six or seven seconds because they need they have a lot more space there they could they could accelerate for but they want to make sure they have enough time to pull up without without being hurt. Okay. I had never experienced it, but it's a lot like guys that weightless experiment is a lot like what part of a roller coaster. So here's a part of a roller coaster. Okay. It can be right here. Oh, that's a terrible car. Right here. Or right here, okay. So let's think about the about the car's acceleration in each spot, okay. Where does the car have downward acceleration? We'll ladies, we'll go one, two, three. Two, two. That's at one to two. Okay. Three. So at three. one we have a downward acceleration and two. two. Where do we have an upward acceleration? At three. Okay. Now where is the acceleration the most downward? One, two, or three? Two. Okay. At one, because at this moment they have an upward an upward velocity, right? Mm -hmm. At this moment they have a downward. downward. So we went from positive to negative. negative. So you can experience maybe momentarily weightlessness or almost weightlessness on an ele on a on a, on a, elevator, on a roller coaster. Okay. Oh, now not not the first hill though. Okay. The second big hill. When you go over that second big hill. Yep, so the second big hill on like shivering timbers, right? You can feel your 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 body come out of the seat a little bit. Oh, that's and that's because you are feeling weightlessness or it's almost weightlessness. Breathe, it's, no, it's you can breathe there. So okay? the second hill you're like It's more difficult to breathe down here. Okay? Because when we get down here, we have a big upward force from the bottom of the, of the seat, which makes it very difficult for your diaphragm to expand to help you to breathe. Okay? Yes, Kyle. You know the one of those things where they go they back and forth? Dragon. Yeah. Uh, why did I? Why do I feel that on that? Because when you get to the top of the, the dragon, so like, here's the bottom, here's the top, here's the top, right? When you get to here and you're turning around, right? Once you turn around, there, this 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 beam is no longer no longer supporting you. It's no longer pulling you up. It's just letting you fall down at an acceleration almost gravity. The rip cord. So you experience the same thing. Okay? And the rip cord works the same way. Right. So, all these amusement park rides use that same idea that when our acceleration is close to 9.8, right, you might get an acceleration like 6 or 7 here, that's downward, you experience weightlessness. So, this is more of a reason to go see a point. They got bigger rides. So, more weight. You experience it both places. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about that later. All right. Now, are there any questions that pertain just to this?